this section here, the lagoon that they can be swimming around in. So we do, uh, of course, give them that signal there each and every time that we do expect to feed them. And then they'll be trained to recognize that and swim right over our platform here if they were hungry and interested. Now the shark species that we do have in here and that we're going to be feeding here today is going to be the bonnethead sharks. We'll have a total of 10 of them in here. Well, all these full grown individuals, when you just happen to see them swim on by, we have one male in here who's full grown at about three to three and a half meters so in length. And then the rest are going to be our females, and they'll get up to about four to five meters so. Now, that size difference there between the two sexes is something called sexual dimorphism. That distinguishable size difference is the way to uh, help you distinguish between males and females. Also, if you look close enough at their heads or their septal foils, they don't appear the same um, kind of a shape as well. Females have almost a perfect semicircle, whereas our one male will have a little irregularity. It'll jut out just a little bit further at the tip. That will also flatten off as well. Now, a lot of times when people first see our bonnethead shark, they will easily mistake them for a juvenile green hammerhead. Size will be one of those key differences, however, between the bonnethead and some of their larger cousins. The great hammerhead is a species of shark that will reach up for about 18 to 20 feet or so at full grown size. <laughs> now also both of those individuals are getting those namesakes by the shapes of their heads. So that bonnet head will have that head resembling a baby's bonnet, whereas that great hammer will have more of a hammer or T shape. So theirs is almost like I said, that perfect semicircle, uh, whereas those great hammer heads kind of more of a rectangle. Now, sharks are part of the Elasmobranchs family, which is your cartilaginous species of individual. That'll include not only sharks, rays, but also guitar fish, as well as skates. Now, cartilage is the same material that our nose and ears are made out of, so it's very lightweight and very flexible for them. However, they're not going to be mammals, so there is no maternal instinct between the mother and her offspring. This species of shark will mate and have pups every single year. On average, they have about six or seven or so at a time. However, surprisingly enough, they've been known to have upwards to 16, which is pretty impressive. Now, this is a local species of shark that you can find here in the Florida Keys. A lot of times, they uh, will give birth uh, somewhere where they know that those pups are going to have the best uh, rate of survival. So, a lot of species of shark will have their pups very close to mangrove forests. Those trees that you'll see lining our lagoon here, those cropping roots, which you can find up and down the coast of the Keys as well. And those are going to be great breeding as well as nursery grounds for a lot of juvenile individuals. Uh, those cropping roots there provide nice sanctuary, not allowing larger predators to come inside. Sharks will generally stay there for other individuals for several years until they get big enough to kind of venture out onto their own. Now this species, of course, with their size, they do have some ways to help them out uh, to be able to safely detect a predator that might have to be coming after them. They will have eyes right on the sides of their head, giving them almost 360 degree vision. Of course, that large surface area across their head as well gives them a lot of electrical receptors to be able to sense those electrical impulses that all living things will give off. And of course, with their size, they have speed and agility to their advantage as well. Now, generally, their bigger predators are just going to be larger species of sharks. Now, typical things that a bonnet head is going to be eating is uh, things that they would find on the ocean floor. Using that large head of theirs, they can uh, uncover different items of prey that might be found uh, buried in seagrass beds or even on the ocean floor in the sand. Now, so they'll be eating a lot of crustaceans and different species of bivalves as well. A pretty cool fact about bonnet sharks that was just discovered last year is they're actually the first omnivorous species of shark. So it was discovered that a sea grass was found in the stomach contents of bonnet sharks. There was a study performed to determine if that was an accidental ingestion or if they were uh, gaining nutritional value out of it. Now that was the case, they put a marker on that grass. <coughs> they were finding, here's our little male. They found that the bonnethead was processing it uh, throughout their different organs and tissues and able to use up for about 50 to 60 percent of the nutrients from it, which is pretty impressive. Now, of course, this is going to be the first, however, probably won't be the only species of shark that we will find uh, being a plant eater as well. There will probably be more research in the next uh, couple of years, uh, more on bonnetheads, but also on other species. 
species that might uh, be omnivorous as well. <laughs> now we do go for an encounter in this section of our lagoon. Uh, we're going to walk on the snorkel around in here. Uh, so of course we have our bonnet head sharks. We do also have two stingrays in here as well. And then uh, lots of other fish, a variety of jack species, lots of these fork like tails that you'll see. These are little juvenile permit that you're primarily seeing. Uh, there was a little runner, this uh, bar jack who just swam across. There's that runner just off over there. Uh, all those little needlefish that you'll see right along the surface there. You'll find uh, plenty of mangrove snappers as well, more of those fan like tails, primarily hiding up, of course, in those mangroves. And then, of course, really colorful fish being your 